Well, good morning, everybody. It's Monday, June 17th at about 5.55 in the morning. It's cloudy and 17 degrees here in southeastern Ontario, and it's lightly raining right now. We've got a little area of heavy rain heading our way that will last probably only about uh, 40, 50 minutes to an hour this morning. It's just approaching us now, and it's starting to rain here. So there's the sky off to our northwest, and it's getting increasingly dark. The rain is increasing a little bit as well. So this week we have a heat warning for much of southern Ontario, as does most of the central and southern United States, I believe. We're under the influence of what they call a heat dome, which is a large area of high pressure that sort of sends a lot of the heat or traps a lot of the heat down closer to the surface of the earth. And this will be our first major heat warning of the year. We've had a day or two where we've had heat warnings already but this is the first major extensive one and will probably last up to most of the week as far as i understand now that is fairly unusual for this time of year in southern ontario it wouldn't be that unusual to get this in late july or late august early september but to have an extensive heat dome effect here in uh Ontario in early June, early to mid-June is rather unusual and likely just a, another consequence of uh, climate change uh, with gradually increasing temperatures and probably gradually increasing storm events and droughts and all the associated weather-related phenomena that that effect brings. Our kingfishers were going a little bit crazy there when I first came out here and I was trying to see if there might be a predator trying to get their young. Now kingfishers nest in the ground on sandy slopes or gravelly loamy slopes where they can dig a hole and uh, lay their eggs inside the uh, tunnel that they make. And sometimes they get excavated out by predators such as uh, raccoons, skunks, coyotes, fox, things like that, weasels, I guess. And I think here in the pit, they haven't had a lot of success lately. Now this morning they seem agitated. I'm not sure if it's because something's at their nest hole and I'm not even sure where their active nest hole is this year. I haven't spent enough time uh, deciphering that out, but um, it could also be that one or more young have come out of the nest have fledged and are now outside of the nest, at which time the adults also get very agitated trying to make sure their babies are protected. So I'm not sure what the situation there is. I just hope they have luck this year and get some babies out. Some of our tree swallows have already started to fledge. I think I noticed a few out of the box yesterday. Other ones are just getting ready to fledge. They've been sitting at the nest holes, peeking out for a week or more now. And then others are still at a fairly early stage. They were just later getting started, so their babies are quite small. And I've been doing regular nest checks, trying to ensure that the uh, blowfly larvae aren't overpopulating their nest box, because if they do, they will kill the babies. So that's always a bit of a challenge. But anyhow, looks like we're gonna have a pretty good crop of baby tree swallows this year again, which is always nice to see. So over the last two weeks, we've received about two inches of rain, which has been nice because things were drying up here pretty significantly. In two or three weeks, I guess we'll be bringing in the hay for another year. Hopefully we won't have to do it on a really hot couple days like we're gonna have right now tree swallows flying around here up in the front field as well cat bird in the trees over here okay I'm out in the barn right now and it's always a nice place to come when it's raining because you have the protection of the roof and you can hear the rain on the roof and here's the view out the back of the barn towards the horse shelter
Well, as you can see in this radar image, it looks like most of the heavy rain is going south just west of us over towards Belleville and Napanee, unfortunately, but I think we're going to get grazed on the edge of it again. So what you want to do in these heat events is to make sure you're drinking lots of water. If you're exercising throughout the day, if at all possible, try and do that at the cooler time of the day, which is usually the morning during these types of events. Even late evening is usually still quite hot from all the heating that's occurred during the day. So mornings are the best times to get out. I'd probably be out cycling right now if it wasn't raining. That was my plan this week because the mornings were going to be so warm. I can still get out and cycle in my shorts and t-shirt and not feel cold. So um, that was my plan. Maybe I'll get that in for the next few days. Also, I have the dogs to walk. Now those walks will be shorter. And again, probably done earlier in the day as opposed to later. In my old job, which was working for a natural resource agency, I was often doing field work out on these really hot days. And in many ways, I kind of enjoyed it. You just took your time and, like I said, make sure you drank plenty of water. You weren't out there killing yourself usually. Uh, with heavy exercise as far as lifting weights or anything like that. It was mainly a matter of walking. Although sometimes it did get oppressive. Quite often doing wetland evaluations where you're trudging through deep water or wet soggy ground, heavy dense brush. The same goes for upland sites where you'd be often compassing your way through the uh, underbrush. This was before the days of uh, GPS in some cases and I was just using a compass. I remember one site in particular where I did a number of compass lines of several hundred meters up to a kilometer right through dense swamp forest where I was basically falling down into wet holes and the mosquitoes were horrific. And I do remember coming home drenched sometimes just with sweat from hiking all day and the heat and humidity and bug bites everywhere. I didn't even often use bug repellent because I often had to be riding and touching cameras and things and even picking up wildlife like frogs or whatever I might find and I didn't want to get the repellent on them because it can injure them or kill them. So I tend to go about my work without any repellent as long as I can. Well, as you can probably hear on the barn roof, the rain is increasing. It's getting heavier, so that's nice to hear. Haven't heard any thunder yet. I thought there might be some lightning with these storms because they look pretty intense. Now that may still be to come, but so far no lightning or thunder. Thought I'd come out with the umbrella again. The barn roof certainly amplifies the sound of the rain to make it sound much worse than it really is, but it's raining moderately right now. That's how I'd describe it. It is nice to get out in the rain and actually enjoy it firsthand. I don't really come outside with an umbrella that often unless I'm trying to do videos like this, but I should probably come out and just walk around in the rain more often with an umbrella to enjoy it on a first-hand basis instead of just sitting in the house and looking out at it because it is very pleasant. It's got a very peaceful feeling about it and helps to set your mind at ease just listening to the rain. I guess that's why so many... Uh, people like to listen to those rain recordings trying to get to sleep and I think it helps a lot of people. Now one of the main problems with these heat events is that even if we can look after ourselves with air conditioning and modifying our activity levels and eating and drinking properly, managing our lives to get along with it, we have to remember that the wildlife can't do that. They're stuck outside in it. They don't have air conditioning. They have to keep being active to survive, so even though things may seem fine from our perspective, if we can arrange it that way, the wildlife have no choice. They have to grin and bear it, or basically die. And that's one of the very frightening things about climate change, is that if temperatures get to a point, and storms and drought and all those things, fires, if they get to a point where wildlife can no longer survive, and perhaps even the plants that they depend on on the world basis can't survive, then we're all in a real pile of trouble. So I think I'm going to head in now. I'll maybe come out again if the rain starts in earnest. It's raining fairly heavily right now, but uh, not the real heavy rain I was hoping for. So 
If things change, I may pop out again. Otherwise, hope you've enjoyed this little walk around in the rain on Monday, June 17th. Hopefully I can get some more weather related content out here on the channel. I did advertise it as part of my topics that I'd be covering on this channel and haven't really done a whole lot other than, you know, snow storms in the winter and that kind of stuff. So hopefully I'll get out more this summer and capture some weather related stuff. Catch you later.